long rollers of the eastern oceans break on the shores of many islands. Islands that for centuries have been far from the world's alarms. But in the closing stages of the war, even their peace was shattered. They too became part of the pattern of victory. They became air bases. For whoever would rule the seas must be master of the air above them. Attention all personnel. Attention all personnel. A squadron to the left. B to the right. Get clear of the beaches. A squadron to the left. B to the right. I can't remember exactly when it was we landed on our island. And it's no good asking me where it was because, well, I haven't a clue. Still, what was more important, the Japs didn't have a clue either. It was just a small place with lots of sand and loads of palms. Must be hundreds like it. Attention all personnel. All MT personnel report to seaside immediately. Shifting an airfield was always a big job, in the desert, Normandy, or anywhere else for that matter. But here it was even bigger. First you've got to get all the equipment in by sea. <laughs> and you need some equipment. Because you've got to hack the field right out of the jungle. But before you can start, you've got to build a road to the place where you're going to do the hacking. The first thing we did after landing was to make a cuppa. For whatever the job, well, you've just got to do it systematically. After that, we made ourselves a home. And we made it good and comfortable, too, because we knew we'd be there for some time. But within a few hours of landing, the main job started. Yes, after a few days, the site took shape. What was once a bit like a hothouse at Kew became a clear space big enough to build a runway. Nowadays, laying a strip is like building something out of Meccano. Section by section, you wheel it out and lay it down. So now we've got our field. Now we had to put some planes on it. We couldn't fly them in was too far. So they had to come in the same way as the airfield, bit by bit. I don't think we didn't get a break once in a while. Sundays, we took things a bit easier. But, leisure or no leisure, there was one day when everyone was on the airfield. The day we put the first kites into the air. (laughs) 
All the rest of the island rolled up too. Most of them had never seen a plane, much less a fighting job like a Spitfire. Yes, it was, it was a great day. One of those days when you feel, you know, that you achieved something. Some of theirs? No, mate. Some of ours. The Indian Ocean covers 16,000 square miles and the people who dwell upon its shores live in a world apart. But a certain yellow nation threatened these people, and so with every dawn, the people hear this noise. Catalina coming home from the day's first patrol. For many of the native harbors are now bases, and side by side with the huts are the tents of the RAF, and side by side with the fishing boats are the flying boats and the launches of air sea rescue. Here in Ceylon, it's hot. From the first thing in the morning to the last thing at night. And when you get up, the heat gets up too and hits you for six. And my last billet was a Nissan hut somewhere near Harwich. And getting up somewhere near Harwich could be much more uncomfortable. But in any case, the job has to go on. Flying boats have still got to have their dailies, even though it is umpteen in the shade. And that engine is like a hot plate. There are generally quite a few of the locals around coping with their own jobs or helping us out with some of ours. And hour by hour throughout the day, the cats are made ready for takeoff, and the sweeps must be kept going. The Indian Ocean is quite some pond and there's plenty of water to keep an eye on. When the last kite is gone, there's time for pleasure. A dip in the pane, that's local slang for water. A sail around the bay. And it's then that you realize that Ceylon has got something. But sometimes there's trouble. The Catalina, way out there in the blue, spots something and down she goes to investigate. Looks like a dinghy. Yep, somebody's ditched. 